The 6.5 is on the road here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're at Dell Tech World 2025, and it has been a great event so far. A lot of enterprises talking about the value they're getting out of AI, and of course, I love products. We're hearing new hardware, new software, new services to wrap all those together. Yeah, I love what we're seeing in terms of pulling it together and really bringing the value propositions. We saw Keynote Day One, really sort of the beginning of a story about reimagining the future, where Michael Dell really took the stage, brought the big customers out. And then today, Jeff Clark really brought those generative AI applications. He kind of brought those you know, proof of concepts to life. And yeah. I think that was just a great continuation. The story here is definitely about bringing it all together, yeah. bringing it all to life. So let's uh, dig a little deeper here. We love infrastructure. Infrastructure is sexy. We've been saying that forever, even before everybody jumped on the bandwagon. Uh, there's been a ton of discussions. Uh, you know, generally people talk about GPU compute now, CPUs, they talk about HBM memory, uh, they talk about storage, but what about uh, the connective tissue that pulls that all together? And that is networking, right? And, and networking can either be your friend or your foe based on the quality and the way that it is set up. So. I can't imagine a better person to talk about this <clears throat> and optics than James from Dell. James, great to see you. Thank you, Pat. So happy to be here and talk about this topic. I've been with Dell for 25 years and living in the networking arena that entire time. Always find a better way to, uh, the better mousetrap as it were, uh, is always exciting. So today I'm here to talk about LPO. You know, we're announcing a new solution and uh, LPO really is uh, important to be able to find how do we get better benefits, right? Yeah. And uh, we're looking for how do we remove components that are, you know, maybe not necessarily in every every circumstance to get us to get us there quicker. And so, an LPO, a linear programmable optic or linear program optic, is uh, helps us remove the DSP from that solution. So, not to get into the technical weeds, but well, maybe we can do this. Maybe if you can talk about, okay, there's copper. Uh, and there's optics. Yep. Uh, tell us about why you might need something more than copper. I thought copper was going to solve everything. I mean, we have scale up networks that are copper. Yes, never bet against copper for sure. But copper, uh, I mean, phys phys physics gets in the way. Uh, and on a 400, 800 meter, uh, 800 uh, data rate transceiver, you yeah. can go at most four meters on copper. And that's if everything is pristinely. Uh, orchestrated, usually it's only two. Okay, so in a data center the size of a football field, you're gonna need more than four meters. So, yeah. so that's where fiber comes in, and um, uh, as you get into these high-powered 400 and 800 gig transceivers, all of a sudden they're consuming a lot of power. Uh, and they're adding a little bit of latency, uh, and they're generating heat like crazy. So. so it sounds like, you know, LPO offers a number of benefits Obviously, the distance is going to be one of the big reasons that we look to light instead of copper yep. to solve this problem. Um, what do you sort of, are there other benefits though? Because I think a lot of companies are sort of, they're always in this weighing optionality right now. Right, right. It's a, there's some different cost impacts, right, related to, to optics. I mean, beyond just the distance, what do you sort of share with your, your customers about some of the key benefits to LPO? Yeah, so great question. And the, it's the money question. This is the important one right here. And it's really, it's, it's three things. It's power, it's cost, and it's latency. So the, the power, as I, as I mentioned, the DSP, we can remove the DSP. The yeah. DSP is the most, the largest consumer power in that transceiver device. Okay, and so you remove that, okay, the power is gonna come down. So your uh, TRU, uh, your, your cost of ownership over, over the years is going to be better, l less power. The second is the, the cost of that device. It's not only the most power hungry, it's the most expensive element in that transceiver. And so you help with that. And then the third is every time you have a bump of the wire and you go through a, a, an ASIC, it's another about 50 nanoseconds. So 50 nanoseconds on one side, 50 nanoseconds here, it starts to add up. Yep. So those are the primary reasons. Yeah, so we are here at Dell Tech World and all its splendor and glory. Uh, there was a ton of announcements made uh, across uh, storage, across compute, 
uh, and around networking, yeah. and including software and the services that go on top of that. What announcements did, did you make here at the show? Uh, thanks for leading into that. So we're, uh, we're announcing uh, industry first switch to NIC LPO solution. Okay, and so we're in a unique position uh, as Dell because we make, we make all those components. We're not relying on a partner to give us the server. You know, we're the, we're the number one server company. Uh, and we sell our own uh, switches as well. So the reason that's important is because um, LPO is, since you're removing the DSP, the DSP is the, it is the, the cosmetic, you know, stuff, lipstick, that allows you to get past a, a myriad of, you know, problems. So it, it's the gearbox, so if you need to change speeds from 100 gig sturdies to a 50 gig, two by 50 gig, yeah. it takes care of that. If you need to do, if you have need to get some smoothing in there, it'll, it'll the DSP is magic, okay? Um, the problem is that now, where it could do all that stuff for you, things got a little noisy, it'll take care of it, it's gone. So you have to have a very clean engineered link essentially, but since we are selling everything in this picture, uh, the servers, the, the NICs, the transceivers, we can characterize that on all of our equipment right up front, and then we can sell in volume. Whereas a, a pure networking company, they don't have the server, they have to make assumptions or go with partnerships and things change and they don't know, so that's a, a huge reason why we can actually introduce this solution and you haven't seen it anywhere else. Glad you hit on that. Yeah, so, you know? so James, uh, we hear a lot as we sort of moved into this rapid warp speed build out of AI about co-packaged optics, CPO, and just because we don't get enough acronyms, you know, it doesn't even exactly align to how LPO, but the bottom line is, is we're hearing about it, it's seemingly coming. Can you share a little bit with the audience about kind of how CPO and LPO compare? Is it a competitor? Do these things work in conjunction? Um, because I think this is going to be a very popular topic uh, over the next few years as, as we see, uh, you know, compute designs right. look to increase scale for connectivity. I thought this question might come up. I brought my boxing gloves here. <laughs> yeah. uh, seriously though, CPO is a, like a competing solution. Okay. They both head in the same direction of lowering the power, reducing latency, and uh, changing the cost. But both lower the cost in some ways, in different ways. A CPO, a co-packaged optic, they move like the lasers and some of the components inside the switch, right yes. on the right on the, the layer right next to the, the NPU, and so you have a, a nice, clean, easy um, connectivity there. You don't have to go all the way out to the transceiver. Okay, so it's kind of obvious that that's going to be less expensive. There are other complications, though. Okay, well now you have to use all the ports in order to really get the the cost savings that you need. Uh, also, if there's a problem, now you uh, you have to replace the whole switch, potentially, instead of just a transceiver. So, I mean, there's there's definitely places where it makes sense. And I'm, I'm not taking a position that they're bad. I don't. They have their place, yeah. and they will hit their marketplace. But I think that they coexist with LPO uh, for different customers and different use cases. The um, the CPO is something that is definitely coming, but it's not quite proven uh, yet. I don't have any doubt that it will be. Um, but my, what I like to say is LPO is this is a CPO without the baggage, is how I how I describe it. Yeah, and so d d doing a double click um, on that, you know, I I've had a, a lot of conversations even with the hyperscalers, mm -hmm. and a lot of questions I get are around reliability, and some yep. questions about, okay, if something happens uh, with my CPO, first of all, if I have LPO, uh, I, can, I can replace the module, and, 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 and we're, we're good to go. Right. And a lot of questions on, well, if CPO goes down, am I not only going to take down the whole switch? If I take down the whole switch, I take down an entire node of uh, GPUs or XPUs. That's the risk. Uh, and that's a, and I know the industry is, is trying to respond with maybe a modular CPO architecture. Yeah. Uh, but, but anyways, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot more complexity that the industry has to put time into uh, to, to figure that out. And I, and I don't think, unless you're a gigantic hyperscaler and, and you know the risks going in and you control every part of that, uh, if you want to dive right into that right now. I mean, you can't dive into that right now. I think in total, maybe <laughs> funny, a, maybe 100,000 uh, have, have shipped yeah. uh, uh, at this point. Uh, I do believe that at some point is the future. We'll probably see 
CPO to the XPU or CPO to the GPU, but that is a, that is a long ways uh, away uh, from here. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and I think that it's really, again, solution-based. If you have super high density, dense solutions, which in, yeah. we're in the world of AI, so we see that a lot, that potential has more appeal uh, for it. Um, versus the flexibility of an LPO. If I want to use an LPO, great. If I want to use a classic transceiver, I'm done. You know, and so I have that flexibility. So um, we'll see how they both kind of exist and co live yeah. next to each other. Hey, I wanted to, to, to do a double click on the power savings. Uh, can you give, and this is uh, power savings versus copper, okay? When it, when it comes to that, that, that oh, would goodness. be the, the, like you talked about all the power savings is there a, is an order of magnitude, like just, just to give the audience a sense of, of how much power you can save? So let's talk about a 400 gig transceiver. Uh, a classic DAC cable is basically no power. It's amazing, it's so little it, that the electrons are just flying through. There's no, there's no tax. There's no electric, no electric devices in the transceiver itself. Um, versus a, a transceiver, uh, the classic, um, like a single mode today is anywhere from, what, seven to nine watts. An LPO would be like uh, four and a half to six watts. So you can, you can basically cut the, the power in half typically, but in, compared to copper, oh, copper's gonna win every time. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, sorry, I meant performance. <laughs> oh, perf <laughs> performance. Sorry about that. <laughs> yes, so performance wise on the, the copper, uh, um, Again, there's, it's flying along, so it's about the same, the same as, a, as a fiber solution. Um, the only difference is going to be in a fiber solution is do you have the DSP that's going to have that extra 50 nanosecond speed bump yes. or not. And so LPO um, performance compared to copper is going to be right next to each other. They're going to be almost the same. Appreciate that. So James, as we tie off the conversation, thank you so much for giving us the rundown. What are people here, you know, look, the AI factories get a lot of attention. Yeah. Everybody wants to pick up a new AI PC, but for the, for the, you know, the people working in the racks and building this stuff out, this stuff's cool. Yeah. So all those, the technical folks here that are trying to think about their future, their designs, that want to get to know these solutions a little better, what are you all showing off here at Dell Technologies World? Yeah, so we're not here to talk, we're here to show. And if you visit the, the CMON booth for 65, we actually have this running live in Iraq. We have the 800 gig switch, we have two servers. We're running both single mode option and multi-mode option through a, a real world scenario, through a full structure cable layout, not just a, you know, a demo, a, a lab thing where you got the, the loop back between two, which is, okay, cool, but not very impactful. So yeah, it's the full thing. So CMON 465, please come check it out. All right, well, James, thanks so much for joining us here at 6.5 on the road at Dell Technologies World 2025. Look forward to hearing more from you soon and tracking all that's going on with LPO, CPO, networking, and all things that connect the future. Future looks bright. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This is the 6.5 on the road at Dell Technologies World 2025. We're going to step away and take a break. We'll see you all back here very soon.